Great, so it's a little bit theory time, so where we will discuss about the system design and the product requirements. Our application, as I said in the intro video, it's a kind of e-commerce application, and we are going to focus on the full stack application, uh, and primarily we will be more focused on the backend part, a little bit less focused on the frontend part, right? So that means we are going to build a whole uh, backend application, then we are, we are going to uh, consume all this API using the front-end application. As you can see, we have four sections right here for a very basic stage. That is called product requirements and system design and architecture, technology and infrastructure, and uh, finally the deployment. So these are the four sections we are going to discuss. First of all, all right, so our application is a kind of e-commerce application where user can collaborate uh, together as a buyer and seller, where user can become a seller as well as and manage their product and sell their products and buyer can buy the products by paying money. That is going to be uh, with the help of the online payment system, right? And end of the day, uh, the user will be having a kind of interaction just like, you know, the invoice, emails, OTP, etc. Cool thing is we will be building the whole application in a monolithic way first uh, by keeping it mine and a modular way uh, by following some kind of like clean architecture and a solid principle. And after that, we will be going to segregate the whole thing, like whole features into uh, microservices where we will be going to introduce some kind of message broker just like Apache Kafka and uh, gRPC. And we will try to introduce the GraphQL as well as in the, in the later stage. So you can learn everything, whatever you needed to learn uh, to build something just like from the scratch to production level. Okay, so this is the business goal exactly, e-commerce application, buyer and seller collaborations, online payment and everything is going to happen, right? So this is like some kind of the wireframe or maybe MVP just like this, right? Then, but the final product will be pretty much professional way the look and feel will be totally different. Perfect. So now let's try to understand the use cases of this whole application. So user can be buy the product online and user can become seller as well as, and seller can ma manage the product and orders, right? Seller can collect the payment and view transactions. So these are the basic goal of the whole application, or you can say the basic use cases of the application, right? So how the interaction is going to happen, the seller can uh, come to the platform and the buyer can also come to the platform where seller can add their products and buyer can buy the product. So that is the, that's the very basic uh, interaction, right? Let's discuss about the system design part. So why system design is needed and what is the necessity of the system design? As you can see here in the application description, like we got the complete idea, like it can be have a buyer, seller and uh, products, etc. So we have a complete clue, right? But it is not clarifying like what are the components of the software going to be, the architecture of the software which is going to be perform the certain task or maybe uh, all the components going to be perform certain tasks to achieve the final goal. So that is not clarified here. So that's why system design is coming to the picture, which is a kind of process like where we are going to define the architecture of the different components, interfaces, modules, and which is going to provide the data flow. And we can figure out like, what are the functional and non-functional components going to be uh, it's present in this whole system, right? It's a kind of clear picture of, or you can say it's a kind of blueprint of the whole application, right? So let's try to segregate the functional and non-functional requirements so we can have a clear understanding of what are the things we need to design for the whole application. So first of all, the functional requirement, there are uh, certain areas earlier that is called user, catalog, payment, and notifications. So user can have like, a capability of a sign up and a login functionality and user can be verified with the help of notifications such, such like one time password and sms and user can become a seller and buyer as well as in the catalog section exactly it's a kind of listing of the products where product going to be resides where we will be uh, listing our products and we can manage the product create update delete the products on behalf of the the seller right and uh, as, we, as you can see in the user section, user can become seller also. Then seller will be get the privileges for managing the products. And in the catalog section, we will be having the stock management as well as. That means once the product is sold out, then definitely we need to maintain this specific, uh, the numbers of the units, whatever we are going to maintain right there, that is we need to, we need to tackle it, right? So that is how the catalog is going to handle, like catalog and product listing, manage product and stock management. And another things we can have like that is called a payment, right? The payment can, buyer can purchase the product using online payment card, online banking, etc., right? And another one is the notification. That is the last one that is called, while we'll be having the payment, while we'll be having out of stock or user can have uh, like uh, uh, verification stuff, then certainly there is a kind of 
notification systems going to be needed that is called email and sms and this is the exactly the very brief overview of the functional requirements and uh, i just want to keep it concise so that's why i have added the necess necessary ones only and you can go ahead and you can add as per your requirements or you can ex expand a little bit more in terms of whatever the user uh, functionalities is going to be needed and based on that you can add all this requirement in the functional requirement section all right so non-functional requirement is a kind of extremely necessary part of the system design which is going to define uh, how application will behave in the certain environment and what are the what are the needs of the, the infrastructure necessity uh, as an example how our application will behave when it will be it will receive the, the x amount of the, the user traffic right and while our application are storing some kind of the files and where it will go through where we will store it right and if you are keeping this my this much specific amount of uh, uh, memory space then how you, it will behave when file size will grow so all those things like all this behavioral or requirements in terms of like infrastructure level uh, all these things we can mention right here in the non-functional requirements so let's uh, take a look at what are the things we have added right here so first we said systems should be highly available in the cloud with multiple regions because it's a c2c portal yeah that's true and systems should maintain the best practices and able to scale horizontally at any level because why exactly it's needed uh, while our application will receive exponentially or maybe a uh, huge amount of the traffic as you can see like in the many uh, uh, the e-commerce site it, ha it has a kind of sales right the specific promotions at that time user traffic will grow at that time how our application will behave if we don't have a kind of uh, good practice and we are not be able to scale our application then our application will not respond right maybe server will spin up in the background and it will not respond in uh, in terms of it will give you some kind of late, late response which is extremely it's it's not a kind of a good experience for users right so those are the things we need to keep in mind and another thing system to design the way it's break break it down to the microservices that is as i said in earlier we'll be going to design the whole applications first of all uh, in the monolithic way but we will be writing some modular code in with the help of the clean architecture so at any point if you think uh, our application is right now receiving a lot of uh, uh, traffic and maybe we need to break it down the whole unit in the individual way so it can be more durable and it can be more available so if you write this stuff if you if you follow that principle then definitely you can break it down to microservices so that is the part we are going to um, we are going to define here in non-personal requirement and certainly list a couple services and the communication that's true and uh, it should have a mechanism for logging and monitoring to inspect the services uh, health and availability that this is the extremely important point which is often we are ignoring we should have to keep this uh, monitoring in place and observability in the place because um, uh, at any point of time we can we may encounter some kind of errors because of the user bad input or maybe application is not behaving correctly due to some reason right and so what are the internal errors we need to keep it mind like we need to fix it and uh, all those things how we can get it if we if we have a proper monitoring system and logging system in place right so that's why this specific things exactly it's needed as a kind of non-personal requirement right which is also we are going to take care of systems so design with documentation for better scope of usability to understand the architecture and the business logic uh, of api users right so this is extremely necessary while you are designing some application or may system certainly the documentation is the key thing which is going to provide you uh, the feature of or scope of the extend your features in future right maybe uh, the front end front end team just uh, want to uh, integrate the apis and if we don't have a kind of documentation and what are the credential what are the parameters going to be uh, needed as a kind of input then it will going to be a nightmare right to get rid of this kind of issues we should have to maintain the documentation also this is also we can keep it in non-functional requirement so it follows secures certainly the secure as we are going to discuss in our uh, upcoming videos where we will be describing like the common query responsibility and the segregation in a, in a kind of broad way so where we will understand why extremely is necessary secure as for our software systems so let's try to understand the basic architecture so now you can see our user is try to communicate with our front end application right which is called by entering some kind of address that is called xyz.com right and our react application the front end application which is built on the top of react 
And the React application is to try to communicate with our app server, right? And app server is communicating with our database and it's giving back the response, right? Then user can see uh, these are the products, these are the things we can buy or add the products, etc. Whatever the user operations that is happening right here. Now you can see some of the things are sitting in between, right? First of all, you can see uh, there's a kind of uh, while user is coming to our front end application, then uh, user need to put kind of domain name that is called https xyz.com, right? So this is handled by Route 53. And while we are deploying our application to Amplify, then it is like making sure like all these domain names are correctly settings, like it is configured correctly. And once it is configured, then we are adding some kind of uh, SSL certificate also. So we will be making sure our user will be having our site in a secure way. They can exchange their information as an example, card number, etc., etc. So that's why we are setting up right, right here this one. Right and Amplify, especially we are going to use for deploy our front end application. That's why we are keeping it together here. Now you can see our React application is communicating with our back end application uh, with the help of the HTTPS connection. Right. So which is again we have set up some kind of SSL certificate uh, just to, to make sure like while our React application is exchanging data, so it can have a kind of uh, secure connection. Right. And this is the application load balancer, which is going to tackle the application traffic in terms of uh, if it seems like there is a kind of huge traffic or tremendous amount of traffic is coming to our backend system, then our application load balancer is going to spawn a new server for this, right? So it can be distributed the traffic uh, uh, equally and our application can respond very smoothly, right? Now you can see here our application server is storing some kind of a file in the object storage which is called S3, right? Where you can, you can, let's assume we are having product images, right? And all the product images we can store here, or maybe customer invoice, that is we can store in, in S3 bucket, where React application can directly access with the help of some kind of the signed URL, which is we are going to expose to, to React uh, application, the front end application, with the help of the, the cloud phone distribution, right? And another thing you can see, our application server is accessing the Elasticsearch as well as. So uh, why exactly we are going to use the Elasticsearch? Because as you can see, this application is a kind of uh, e-commerce application where user can perform a lot of search query in terms of finding product, finding category, finding keywords, etc. So in this case, if you directly deal with the RDS, it's going to be extremely expensive, right? So. In that case, what we are doing while we are just creating our products or updating the products, we are just to try to index the specific document in the Elasticsearch as well as where React application can directly access to, uh, to Elasticsearch or it can be access that specific source with the help of our app server as well as. So that's why Elasticsearch is the plus, right? And another thing, we are using RDS for our database instances uh, where we'll be using PostgreSQL and we'll be going to use the multiple database as well as in our case maybe we will be going to introduce sorting as well as, right? Where you can see there are two or maybe three instances are serving the, the, you know, the database logic or stuff uh, to our app server, where all the app server are kind of communicating with like a read server or read database or write database, etc. And some, some kind of third party we are going to use that is specifically for making payments, sending notifications, sending emails, or um, generating PDF, etc. So which is we are going to implement here. So. Overall, this is the basic architecture of our whole backend system and the front end application. Now let's discuss about technology size. So why or what are the technology we are going to use in this uh, whole series? As I said in the beginning, we are going to use the Go and React.js. These are the two things we are going to use, but underneath of the Go and React.js, there are a lot of tools, there are a lot of systems, which is we are going to uh, use. Uh, you can say it as a tech stack, uh, some kind of wrapper libraries we are going to use. That is, you need to decide it here. What to choose in, in terms of in this application, serverless or the server, right? So there are a few things we need to keep in mind, like uh, choosing server over the serverless. Right? So if you are trying to build something which is extremely uh, in terms of like depends on the uses and you are not going to focus much more on uh, the infrastructure side by scaling, by providing some kind of scalability, etc., and definitely the, you can go with the serverless stuff, right? But there is a kind of pros and cons also there. Maybe a, there is a kind of separate video tutorial I'm going to put like what what is the pros and cons on the serverless 
in terms of like cold start or instantly available the punches on the server side so those are the things maybe we can discuss but as of now you can say uh, depends on the uses like if you don't want to put uh, your hands on the scaling or infrastructure or set up a lot of the stuff then definitely it's, it's worthy to go with the serverless because there you no need to pay much more money for spinning your server as much as you have users then you need to pay that's why actually serverless is extremely beneficial but for server certainly you need to spin a kind of instance uh, which is you need to pay certain money for a monthly rate or maybe you can go for uh, some kind of the container wise just like you know per get cluster or something else also you can go ahead but in our case uh, we can say besides the serverless prefer to go with the the server based uh, system all right so now let's try to discuss about what are the things we are going to use as a kind of tech stack in react.js we are going to use the typescript and we are going to use cognito and we will be going to use the redux and elastic source as well as and finally we are going to deploy in a whole front end application in amplify right which is going to be uh, available just like this you can see in the backend system we are going to use go and we will be going to use uh, some kind of the http framework that is called fiber and we will be use the orm we will use the stripe elastic source sandgrid and aws sdk as well as and end of the day we will be going to de deploy the whole application in aws and i'm going to show you how we, we can deploy the same stuff in the in the gcp as well as all right so these are the tech stack we are going to use for our whole application in the next video we are going to discuss about the infrastructure part let's take a quick break